So we've looked at how electoral votes are distributed across states and how they're awarded within each state. Now let's think about how we actually vote for presidential candidates. In almost every state, voters are asked to select just one name, their top choice, for the presidential election. Whichever candidate gets the most votes wins the state. It's the simplest way to vote. That system is called plurality voting. But that's not the only way things can happen. There's one alternative that's been gaining prominence around the country and was recently adopted by both Maine and Alaska for presidential elections. This system is called Ranked Choice Voting, or RCV. Under this system, voters consider all of the candidates running for office and rank them in order of their preference. Top pick gets a one, the second pick gets a two, and so on, for as many candidates as there are on the ballot. Once the ballots are in, the first choice votes are counted. And if any candidate receives a majority of first choice votes, 50% plus one or more, they win. But if no candidate earns a majority of first choice votes, the election goes into an instant runoff. Here's how it works. The candidate with the least number of first choice votes is eliminated. The votes are then counted again, but this time, all the people who voted for the eliminated candidate have their second choice votes counted. With those additional votes, if one candidate crosses the 50% threshold, they win. And if still no one has the majority, they go on to a third round, where another candidate is eliminated, and another instant runoff is conducted. This goes on until one candidate secures a majority. Maybe an example would help. Let's imagine it's 1800, and Thomas Jefferson is running against Aaron Burr and John Adams. Let's make it easy and imagine there were only 20 voters in the election that year. And here are the results. Jefferson has seven votes, 35%, Burr has five votes, 25%, and Adams has eight votes, 40%. Now with plurality voting, the election would be over, with Adams winning the presidency with the most votes. But with ranked choice voting, this is only our first round. Since none of the candidates has a majority, we go to an instant runoff. We drop the candidate with the lowest number of votes, sorry Burr, and count again, this time including the second choice votes of the Burr voters. And it seems like four Burr supporters chose Jefferson as their second choice, and one chose Adams. After this round, Jefferson now has 11 votes, a majority, and the election is over. Jefferson wins. In winner-take-all, ranked choice could ensure that the winning candidate in a state has majority support. With fractional proportional, ranked choice could prevent a third-party candidate from forcing a contingent election. And in the case of a national popular vote, ranked choice would ensure that the winning candidate has majority support nationwide. Proponents of ranked choice voting say that this is a major benefit of the system. It ensures that the winner of an election wins with a majority of votes. Research also indicates that ranked choice may make elections more civil by encouraging candidates to reach out to all sides to secure majority support. Another key benefit is that it reduces the chance of a spoiled election. Let's go back to our three candidates. We saw that most Burr supporters ended up ranking Jefferson as their second choice, and most Jefferson supporters ranked Burr as their second choice. Most voters would have preferred either Jefferson or Burr, but because they split their votes between these two candidates, neither won. Instead, with plurality voting, the least popular candidate, Adams, would have won. This is how ranked choice avoids most spoilers. In this way, ranked choice allows voters to show support for a long shot third party or an independent candidate without worrying about wasting their vote or spoiling an election in a way that puts someone they really don't want to win into office. But some people think that ranked choice comes with its own problems. For one thing, it's complicated. Some voters could struggle to complete their ballots or even feel discouraged from voting, especially those who don't follow politics very closely and don't know any of the other candidates on the ballot. And some think ranked choice may lead to more people being dissatisfied with the result of a presidential election. Would people be confused and upset if a candidate won an election without receiving the most first choice votes? And some others wonder about what kinds of candidates would likely win under ranked choice. Some would prefer a candidate who is willing to take a strong stance on the issues, even if that polarizes some voters, rather than a candidate seeking to appeal to a broad range of voters.